This is section 3.2, the product and quotient rules, objective 2, which is to now compute derivatives using the quotient rule. And the language objective we won't do until class because we're going to sing a song that helps you remember the quotient rule. So until then, I'm just going to teach you this little um, kind of mnemonic device to help you take the derivative of highs over low. It will equal low times the derivative of the high minus high times the derivative of the low over low squared. And people often refer to this as the low d high rule. With example one, now we want to find the derivatives of each of the following using that quotient rule. If we look at part a, we can see that we have a high and we have a low. So the derivative of f will be our low d high, which is the derivative of the high, minus high d low. Oops, might help if I actually take the d low over low squared. So if we finish that up, we get an e to the x times an x squared minus 2x over an x to the fourth. If we look at part b now, if we take the derivative, we will have low d high minus high d low over low squared. We could simplify that if we wished. We'd get a 6x plus a 3 minus a 6x plus a 2. We can see that those 6x's will cancel and we'll be left with a 1 over a 2x plus 1 quantity squared. If we look at this one, again, before we take the derivative, it will be easier if we rewrite this as a power of v's. So this would be 2 times v to the 1 times v to the 1 half. Add those exponents, we get v to the 3 halves. And on the bottom, we still have this v plus 3. So if I want to take the derivative now, I will have my low times my d high. 2 times 3 halves gives me a 3, oops, this is a v, v to the 1 half. So there's my low d high minus my high d low over low squared. And I'm just going to leave that one like that instead of multiplying it all out. With part d, we again run into that issue where we have a choice. We can either differentiate this as it is, or we can simplify this first and then take the derivative. And if you remember what I told you in objective one, it's much easier if you simplify before taking the derivative as opposed to waiting until after. So we are going to rewrite this by making a smart choice for one. We will alter the way this looks by multiplying by a t over a t. When I do that, I'll get a t squared on the top and a t squared plus a c on the bottom. Because notice this t and this t will cancel when I distribute that t to the entire bottom. So now if I want to take the derivative, I will get r prime of t will be low d high minus high d low. Now notice here that c will be treated as a constant because we're differentiating with respect to t. So this will become the 2t and the c will disappear. So there's low d high minus high d low over low squared. If I simplify, I have a 2t cubed plus a 2ct minus a 2t cubed all over a t squared plus c quantity squared. The 2t cubes will cancel and I will have left a 2ct over a t squared plus c quantity squared. 
With example 2, we are interested in finding the equation of the tangent line at a given point. So we've already got the point, which is 4, 0 0.4. We now need the slope, which will be the derivative of f evaluated at the point. So in order to find out what that equals, I need to take the derivative of f and then plug in 4. So that would be my low d high, remember this is x to the 1 half, minus, there's low d high, minus high d low, derivative of the low is just a 1, over that low squared. There's my f prime of x, I want f prime of 4, so I'm going to evaluate this when x is 4. I put the 4 in, that will give me a 5, times a 1 half times a five, 4 to the negative 1 half. Well, that's a 1 over a square root of 4 minus the square root of 4 all over a 4 plus 1, which is a 5 squared. If I simplify that, I'll get a 5 fourths minus a 2 over a 25. Well, that gives me a 5 fourths minus an 8 fourths is a negative 3 fourths over 25 will give me a negative 3 over 100. Now I've got the point and I've got the slope. I can write the equation of the line, which is y equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. And I'm done. With example 3, f is a differentiable function. I want to find an expression for the derivative of this. So a little bit tricky because my low has two terms involved. So that y prime will be the low d high, derivative of f will just be f prime minus high d low. So to get the derivative of the low, I'm now going to have to do the product rule, which will be the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first all over low squared. With example 4, we're given a function graphically and then we are wanting to find a new function that is that f divided by the g and take the derivative of it and evaluate it 5. So we're first going to take the derivative of v using that quotient rule. We'll get a low d high minus high d low over low squared. And then we need to evaluate that at 5. So again, we need to be able to interpret this g of 5 in the context of the picture. So when I write g of 5, I'm actually talking about the output of the function on g or the y coordinate on g that goes with 5. So I go to my 5 and up to g, I see that that is a 2. f prime of 5 represents the slope of f, which is the red graph, at 5. So we can read this slope, the rise over the run is a negative 1 third. Then we want to subtract the output of f when we plug a 5 in, that gives us a 3. And then multiply that by the slope of g at 5, which we can read is 2 over 3. Then finally, we want to divide by that g of 5, or that output of g, which was 2 squared. If I finish this up, I get a negative 2 thirds minus a 6 thirds over a 4. Well, that's a negative 8 thirds over a 4. And remember, dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 4. If we simplify now, we'll get a negative 2 thirds. 
with example 5, again, here's that favorite problem type coming back to haunt you. We have a point that is not on the curve, but is on the tangent line. So in order to find the point on the curve, we have to deal with the general point, which will be a, and then the output of the function with an a plugged in. And then we need the slope at that point, which will be the derivative of this function, low d high minus high d low over low squared evaluated at a. So if I plug a in, I'll have an a minus an a plus a 1 gives me a 1 on the top and an a plus 1 squared on the bottom. Once I've got the slope and I have the point, I can write the equation of the line, which is y equals that slope times x minus the x coordinate plus the y coordinate. Once I have the line, I can use the fact that the point 1, 2 is on that line. That means if I replace y with a 2, and I replace x with a 1, I should end up with a true statement. And notice that this true statement involves only a's and numbers. So I can plug this into my calculator and solve for a, which I have done here. If we turn it on, we can see that I've solved for when 2 equals 1 over a plus 1 squared times a 1 over a plus that y coordinate, I'm solving it for a, and when I hit enter, I ended up with a was either a negative 2 minus a root 3 or a negative 2 plus a root 3. So there's that quadratic formula being applied by the calculator. So I have the x coordinates of the points on the curve, a negative 2 plus a root 3 and a negative 2 minus a root 3. Now my job is to find the points all together, so that means I need the y coordinate as well. So if I take this x coordinate and I plug it into the function, I'll get a negative 2 plus a root 3 on top and a negative 1 plus a root 3 on the bottom because I added 1 to this input. Same thing here, I'll have a negative 2 minus a root 3 over a negative 2 minus a root 3 plus a 1. And I am done.